Read what excites you. F the rest. Better than food, man. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Better Than Food Book Reviews. I'm your host, Clifford Lee Sargent. Hope you're doing well. Gonna try something new today. Got a question from a fan. Sent me a message on Instagram, and I thought it would be uh, helpful to answer it publicly in a video. And I made sure he was cool with it, so, you know, it's all good. And uh, if you would like your question answered, please feel free to message me on there, and uh, if I think it's helpful, then I will absolutely do a video, get a little discussion going, you know, be pretty cool. So, Pablo. Pablo says, hey man, I'm Pablo from Colombia. I found your channel some time ago, and it's pretty great. I've been reluctant to read pretty much my whole life, and now in my 21 years of life on Earth, I've been recently wanting to stop being ignorant and read a book for once. I want to learn about the world and history and to be able to have discussions with others on several topics. But I just feel like I don't know shit, really. Me too. So I'm pretty much lost in regards to what books I should read as an absolute amateur slash book virgin. I was just wondering if you could give me some recommendations of cool books to introduce me into the reading world. Maybe books that I have to read or should read before I die or should read as general knowledge. Best regards. Well, Pablo, thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for your message. Be sure to watch this whole video till the end to hear my recommendation for Pablo, which is the complete stories of Jorge Luis Borges. Don't you fucking hate it when people say that and make you wait through the whole video? I mean, it just takes away from... Anyways, it's Borges, Borges, read Borges. No, I'm, I'm dead serious. En Espanol, Cuentos Completos, in the English version, uh, this one, which uh, they, they really... The English version is... This is... It's a shame. I mean... Really, the Spanish version should be the much nicer one, but the uh, the English version is just absolutely stunning. This is your guy, for sure. But let's talk about that. I'm honored you're asking me about the literary birds and the bees. I've never felt so paternal, as you can see by my goatee. But first, really quick, today's episode is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. These things are awesome. They are light, sleek, industrial, beautiful little pieces of minimalist modern design. Very easy to use, holds up to 12 cards, plus room for cash on the back. The durable material means that each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You can buy this one wallet and carry it for life. These wallets are meant to go into your front or side pocket. Please do not sit on them. The wallet will be fine. It's not a question of the wallet's durability. It's just going to hurt because they're not meant to be sat on. But that's great because they're very convenient. They just go into your front pocket or your side pocket, wherever you want. And if this hasn't yet convinced you, check out their 40,000 five-star reviews. 40,000. In fact, the Rich team is so confident you'll like it, they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. Get 10% off your order today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com forward slash better than food and using the discount code better than food. The link is below. Thanks a bunch. With all respect, it's too subjective a question to answer definitively. That's totally fine. But it's a great question because of all the questions it leads to, right? And so I think you'll find a lot of useful stuff in this video. And especially in the comments section, I imagine. It's a giant open-ended question because it's like, uh, what are the greatest foods I should eat before I die? Right? You know what I mean? I have some great news, but it might be a little frustrating at first. It's completely dependent on you, man. It's completely dependent on you. It's completely dependent on your taste and who you are, who you are. So the real question that I imagine would give you far more value than any old book that I could recommend to you uh, would be, how do I find the greatest books in life for me? That's the question to ask yourself. Because one man's Ulysses is another man's Fifty Shades of Grey if you know what I mean. I've read neither, actually. Another good comparison would be travel, right? One person says, you need to go to Paris. You know, it's a movable feast. Another to Vietnam. Another says, go to Budapest. Um, that might be me. Or maybe Spain or Morocco. All these answers are correct, right? But the real question is, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? There's no should. Forget should. This is going to upset people, but it doesn't matter. Should is for people who are too frightened to find out for themselves. I'll say that again. Should is for people who are too frightened to find out for themselves, right? And we all fall for should, me included, definitely. The question is not what you should want. The question is what do you want? What do you want? Where do you want to go? What do you want to learn about? What do you want to read about? Who do you want to be? What do you want to do with the time you've been allotted, which may unfortunately be short or, or fortunately long, or unfortunately long and, and <laughs> you wish it were shorter? Who knows? What do you want to do with your time on Earth as a conscious being? There's a lot of things to do. What sounds good? Basically, I mean, this is, this is the fundamental question of life right here. But literally, <clears throat> I think we can probably all agree, it kind of just boils down to like, what sounds good? <laughs> <laughs> Especially given the limited options today, perhaps. I'm not sure how things are in Colombia. Up here, it's, you know, it's a little bit of a diminished quality of life, to say the least. But, uh, 
you get what I mean. You know, you got all these options around you. Well, sounds good, dude. What do you want to do? There is no book you have to read before you die, including the Bible. Uh, although many would say that if you're going to read one, that's the one to read. And honestly, it's been such a massively influential book, they'd probably be right. And there are plenty of books without which the world might arguably be improved. But what you have available as an answer to your question is an obscene, endless list of more or less educated, whether that means sincerely interested or academically indoctrinated opinions, including mine, which is worth next to nothing, which is why I'm happy to give it to you. <laughs> Opinions are like, well, it's a, it's a, an American phrase, forget it. I'm just joking. So that's my suggestion. Read what you're naturally interested in, sincerely or superficially. Though I'd wager that the books you'll love will be those that relate to a deep knee-jerk gut reaction interest of yours. It's always nice to be surprised, right? Uh, but it's rarer, I find, especially as you grow older and you get exposed to, to more stuff. You've, you, you read a lot more, you know. You kind of you kind of realize um, what you lean towards naturally. I mean, if you want to start with history, you know, yeah. Like, I mean, like, look, look, Borges does this thing where he has, you know, he writes historical fiction, but it's unbelievably eclectic and profound without being pretentious, uh, and it's short as well. He never wrote a novel, I don't think. He just wrote short stories and poetry. They're gorgeous, gorgeous short stories. And so, you know, it's a perfect place to start because you're interested in history. I'm guessing if you're a Colombian native that Spanish is your natural language. And so, you know, you might speak both English and Spanish, in which case I'm extremely jealous. Uh, I was going to say that this is a big component, you know, where one starts could be, you know, dependent on which culture one is brought up in and which language one speaks at birth. For every language, you have a different author who is famous in said language, which in my opinion means you should take the opportunity to read the original in the original language and not the translation. I mean, for you, I'm very jealous because I don't speak Spanish and you have Borges, you have Cervantes, I mean, you have Bolaño, you have, you have Cesar Ayra, you have, I mean, you have so, so many wonderful authors to read in the original language that they wrote in. And for Colombia, I mean, you have Gabriel Garcia Marquez, the, the titan of the Latin American boom, or Santiago Gamboa. I mean, you have so, so many wonderful authors that you can read in their original language. So I, I'm, I'm extremely jealous, to the point where I'm actually trying to learn your native language, you know, so I can do said thing. So, and if you speak English too, which it seems like your English is fine, you have access to all the wonderful American, Canadian, Australian, and English authors. I mean, it's like, you know, and yet out of all of them, still, I come back to it, uh, I would choose Borges above, above all of them, uh, particularly because you said history. And that, that's the key for me. But you could start anywhere, man. I mean, you can, uh, you know, let's see. You could start with, uh, oh, here. I'm gonna read this one soon, someday. I, t I tell myself these things. Edward Gibbon's The History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. I'd like to get to this one pretty soon. And I mean, for history, you know, you probably you can't go wrong. Plenty of sex and death in that culture, and those are the only two topics worth writing about, as I've said before. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, you can start anywhere, and, and what you're gonna find is it's gonna be a rabbit hole wherever you start. One thing's gonna lead to another, especially with Borges. I mean, he's going to set you off on, I mean, if you're, if you're into him, then you're gonna <laughs> go through all kinds of historical references, all kinds of interesting, beautiful, obscure shit. He's gonna put you onto other authors. He influenced tons of authors. I mean, dude, um, yeah, you wanna talk about gateway drugs? He's your man, definitely. But check out the Reddit threads on history book recommendations. I mean, you know, learn to use that tool. It's a powerful one. Goodreads too also has, I mean, uh, probably tons. Get on Goodreads, man. You know, some of those book reviewers on there, some of those reviews that they write, they're phenomenal. I mean, these are real writers. They ought to be doing it professionally, in my opinion, but maybe they are, maybe not, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I, I think many people would probably tell you to, uh, oh, they tell you to start with uh, this one, which I still haven't read, but Jared Diamond's uh, Guns, Germs, and Steel, you know? I just ordered another book, which was about, it was by a guy named Bernal, I think it was about the, uh, the, the conquistadors uh, at war with Montezuma of the Aztecs when they came over from Spain. But yeah, lucky for us all, it doesn't matter where you start. There's no correct answer. There are just maybe some that might save you a little bit of time, which is all I can hopefully do for you. There's no correct answer. There's only opinions of people who think they know more because they've read more. Just because you've read more does not make you wiser, I should uh, warn you right off the bat. Just because you've read more does not make you wiser. Just because you 
know more things in an academic way does not make you wiser. <laughs> but no matter how much they've read, they still don't know what will most resonate with you. On the subject of yourself, you are in fact and always will be the smartest person in the world, the number one expert. But the crazy thing that happens after, after you've been reading some books for a while is when you pick up a book and it, or the author, seems to know more about you than you consciously do. That's a fucking trip. And that's when you start falling in love with books. When you see such specific details about yourself uh, illustrated and captured in a novel or, or whatever, that's, uh, those are pretty good moments. That's a good shit. And if you read long enough, I guarantee that'll happen and you'll be moved. So yeah, pick a book and start. If you don't like it, stop reading it and choose another one until you come across something that resonates, something that hits, you know? And after you finish that one, which you enjoyed, find the books that the author loved and go read those and rinse and repeat, right? Whatever is most pleasing um, or the best to the general population is probably not what's going to appeal to you most, but it is a place to start. You'll begin to see fairly quickly that uh, everything connects to everything else. It's a giant incestuous party of concepts, ideas, and poetic influence spanning hundreds of years and touching every continent. It's something to marvel at. And don't just do it to like show off or like, you know, become more well-read or because people say you should, you know? I mean, there are far better things to do with your time than read books for that reason. I would suggest you find something that you love and do that instead. Life is really short, man. I mean, when I was growing up, I had a natural affinity for reading. Kind of just sucked me in, so that's just what I went with. If your thing is like boxing, then fucking box and don't worry about books. I actually came to books by way of film and like metal, you know, like punk and metal and uh, experimental music. I just started figuring out what these musicians and filmmakers love to read. And so it just built upon itself. One thing led to another. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you want to hear some... <laughs> my first paycheck that I ever got from my dishwashing job when I was like, I'm not even, I'm not even joking. I was like 14, 14 or 15 was uh, these, these, uh, these two volumes of sod. That was what the money from my first paycheck went to. When <laughs> yep, I started young. So let's go deep here for a second, just, uh, just, just for a bit. You know, you're asking me what you should read or what you have to. You don't have to do anything, nothing. There isn't a single book on the face of the earth that you have to read. You could just as well have a beautiful, fulfilling life without reading a single book. Many before you and I have had just that experience. And there's probably a few people in history whose life was ruined because they fell in love with books. Totally possible. There's far more, I'd wager, whose life was enriched though. So, you know, don't let that scare you away. You could read what the Academy or the literary critics consider the greatest. You could start with the Iliad or the Odyssey. Uh, you could read the, the Western canon from Harold Bloom. Um, you know, he's great. Or you could pull up Le Mans, uh, 100 best books of the 20th century or whatever, and I'm reading number one right now, which is The Stranger by Camus. Uh, wonderful book, one of my favorites. Uh, very, very good book. Gonna review that next. I've also got Crime and Punishment going on at the same time from Dostoevsky, which is uh, convenient because they've actually been compared and it's interesting to read them at the same time. My first time for Crime and Punishment, not my first time for The Stranger. I've read that before, that's a great book, but it's wonderful to return to. Oh, also that's another fun thing that we could talk about is basically, you know, you'll read a book now in your early 20s, right? Uh, and, and you might love it uh, or not. Uh, and then you can read it again in about five or 10 years and uh, you'll, you'll, there will be things that you remember vividly. There will be things that you completely forgot about. And you'll be reading a completely different book in many ways. And that's the fascinating thing about books. There's just too many of them, man. And life is too short. You know, they change with you. They're actually great barometers to measure how you've changed as a person throughout life, throughout the decades of your life. So, uh, I mean, it's fascinating. There's tons of people waiting out there to tell you what the greatest books of all time are. None of it really means anything other than these are the books over time that have influenced society the most and that they've found to be the best. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not a small thing, that's a big deal, but that is all it is. That doesn't, that's the group, that's the collective, that's society, right? That in many ways is a popularity contest. That doesn't guarantee the best experience for the individual, for the most powerful subjective experience. In fact, one could probably make the argument that uh, a great but popular book's effect is watered down the more popular it is because it's so ingrained in the culture. Everybody knows the story and it's influenced everything and it's just been done and done and done to death. So, you know, by the time you actually read the original, you already know it. Um, that's a risk, but it's not a reason to avoid those books 
because they did it and they did it the best and they've lasted this long. There's a reason, there's something there. So, but yeah, the real question and one that might ruin your life for a few years, but if you answer honestly, will help you more than any other piece of advice that anybody will give you ever. The vast majority, if not all of which will be worthless, including anything I give you, uh, is what do you want? What do you want to accomplish with this life? What do you want to do? You might already have a very, very solid idea and you're already buying books on the subject and that's great, man. If on the other hand, you're like a lot of us, myself included, this question will cause many sleepless nights and many anxiety-filled waking moments. It's, uh, it's not an easy question to answer right off the bat, even though some people might think it is. Yeah, what do you read that allows you to lose yourself completely? If it were me, I would take some time to consciously isolate myself and try to determine from which direction I feel the gravitational pull, so to speak. You know what I mean? What are you being drawn towards? Where are you being drawn, right? It's not an easy thing to determine, especially these days, it seems, with all the noise, all the people trying to, all the advertising, basically. Yeah, trying to see which direction you're being pulled in naturally is, is, is not an easy thing. Yeah but it is in your very best interest to determine that as soon as possible, if you don't already know it, which some people might, and good for them. I could put this another way. <laughs> if you came to me and you said, I have never been with a woman, would you ask me who to have sex with? No, no I hope not. <laughs> no, you'd find someone you fancy and you'd go try and get laid. At least that's how it worked when I was a lad of suppler joints. These days, people are doing all kinds of weird shit on their phones. How do you lose your virginity? Or what's the best way to lose your virginity? By fucking someone you want to fuck. <laughs> Last time I checked. Not someone who I told you to fuck. Not someone your parents, friends, teacher, or priest told you to fuck. You fuck the person you want to fuck. As long as it's cool with them and they're of age, naturally. And the same species. Now, what I'm trying to illustrate, Pablo, is that men and women your age, my age, you know, millennials, Gen Z, we outsource so many decisions to influencers or YouTube personalities or so-called experts, yeah, fucking right, therapists or parents, that we don't keep any autonomy. We don't think for ourselves. We don't read for ourselves. And if there's one thing I desperately feel that I should have done more, it's think for myself. Thankfully, I mostly read for myself. But what you should read entirely depends on you. What you wanna do and what you wanna know about. What viscerally attracts you. What hits you in the guts right from the get-go. What engages you against your better judgment? <laughs> That's the kind of book you should read. You know, so forget what I'm interested in. What are you interested in? Because you're asking what you should read before you die, and man, dude, you and I could die in the next 15 minutes. So while you've got the time, do what you wanna do. Read what excites you, fuck the rest. Frankly, neither you nor I have time to waste, at all. Dead serious on that. But if everyone would not mind, I would like to summon the powers of the viewers. The legions of you who are much more well-read than I, and have a practical answer for Pablo. Please leave them in the comments below. Thank you. So in spite of my vague pep talk, Pablo can leave with some tangible titles to pick up. Thanks a bunch, everyone. History, I don't know. Yeah, Guns, Germs, and Steel, I still haven't read that. Paris 1919, that was a pretty good one. What do y'all think? I'm interested too in what you think you should read. So yeah, I'm calling forth the most well-read people I know, and many of them are probably only too happy to provide an answer. So do your own research, but you know, listen to my viewers as well because they're extremely well-read, and would probably be only too happy to provide some recommendations for books on world history. But yeah, I'm a fiction guy, so fiction, history, best of the best, Borges. Jorge Luis Borges, you can't go wrong. So I hope that was helpful. <sighs> Coffee time. For those of you who are new, thank you very much for stopping by and watching. I take the names of all the patrons on Patreon who have donated $5 or more to the show. I place their names in this mason jar and I pull out a name for every review I do and whoever's name I pull out, I send them a hard copy of the book I'm reviewing plus a bag of coffee, roasted by yours truly. And the coffee is delicious. Right now it's from Myanmar, and I love it. For whoever wins today, I'm just gonna send them a copy of the collected fictions of Jorge Luis Borges, since it was my recommendation. So, who shall it be? If you would like to get in on that and help support the show, you can go to patreon.com forward slash books are better than food, or click on the link below and donate $5 or more per video, and I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you very much. For $1 or more, you'll get access to the patron only reviews, the Discord channel, and the Better Than Friday newsletter, which I send out every Friday, which is just a list of five different things I'm interested in at any given time. Could be books in the pipeline, music, films, articles, changes week to week. If you think we have similar tastes, I think you'll enjoy that. Unfortunately, international shipping is not included. Sorry about that. Thank you very much to all the patrons, and best of luck. Okay, here we go. Joe. Thank you very much, Joe. Sincerely appreciate it. You're going to receive the collected fictions of Jorge Luis Borges, plus some delicious coffee. And I hope you love both. Thanks a bunch.
All right, that's all I've got for you today. Please subscribe if you have not already and hit the thumbs up if you enjoy this. And always remember, bring a book wherever you go. Please hit me up on Instagram if you have questions. I can't guarantee a video answer, but I'll certainly consider it. Thank you. All right, take care of yourselves. Have a great night. Talk to you soon. Ciao.